this is our current energy electrical delivery system basically that we have, right? Factory to, to lines to house. You want to tear it down and replace it. That's right. The worldwide electrical grid is too ill-suited, dangerous, and too inefficient to produce and convey electrical current. In fact, it is proven to be uh, dangerous and harmful to, um, to the economies and the uh, well-being of people all over the world. The electrical grid is, um, itself uh, is uh, contrary to the products of electricity. Electricity uh, is not suited for long-distance trans transmission. Which is basically what we have, right? We have a factory where we make it, and then it goes along lines delivering it. And right. Then, yeah, to get to your house, it's a long right. way. So if and the reason is because the longer the lines, the greater the resistance. And that resistance will uh, actually take most of the electricity out of the, out of the lines. So we're wasting and, a lot. And convert it into heat. And the way the grid deals with that um, resistance is to use huge transformers to uh, uh, up the uh, voltage to as much as 500,000 in order to force it through the lines. So that high voltage actually promotes and um, encourages uh, outages and failure by defying another law of electricity, which is that electricity always seeks the path of least resistance. And that high voltage actually causes uh, the electricity to try to evade and try to escape and jump to a, uh, to a line or somewhere else. An easier route. Right, an easier route. And then we have uh, to bring it back down too, right? We can right, obviously it's right. not coming it's, uh, in our, it's our homes. It's got other transformers that brings it down to low v voltage that we use, uh, 120 volt that we use now. So, yeah, and those are also causes more resistance. And all of these transformers um, are actually take electricity away from the grid. So like you but, said, yeah, very yeah. inefficient. But when these uh, transformers fail, um, they fail because if there's a high demand of electricity, they, they uh, get too hot and they'll actually um, burn out and, or shut down. And that causes uh, blackouts of huge areas. So there's really no way of, uh, but the most common actually um, outages are caused by just trees um, that are uh, in the way of the lines. And then, um, of course, the other uh, causes of failure are things like, uh, well, you, up, you already know this. What's the, the, I, I see trees all the time. They're always cutting, yeah. obviously, on every street. They're cutting down, right, trying to go around. Uh, is this number two? Yeah, squirrels? this is the second <laughs> biggest cause of electrical failure. They seem like troublemakers. Yeah. yeah they... <laughs> but then uh, then you have the... Um, uh, weather is the is the third, and uh, fires and accidents and so on. That looks on. like Michigan, but, and yeah, and yeah, Illinois where I grew up. But uh, then what we also have to look forward to is uh, sabotage <laughs> and cyber attacks in right. the future. There's a cyber attacker. <laughs> so those seem like uh, obviously uh, uh, maybe a drunken sabotage, uh, and this one a, a zoo escape. Uh, but and on a serious note, this could you mean even terrorism? Uh, yeah. we're very susceptible to that. Right. But besides that, uh, the grid is just a, a ugly uh, monster. Right. Uh, it's it's uh, really not aesthetically pleasing, and uh, you can see by these major lines and so on, there it is not beautiful. No. Yeah. But why why can't we just upgrade this system? Why can't it be fixed? Well, it's just too um, much friction to overcome, uh, and too much loss to friction. And uh, there's too much vulnerability to uh, all of these things that I've suggested before. And utility companies have to have a huge staff on hand for an occurrence that may or may not happen. Uh, and so it's, uh, it's impossible to deal with that. But actually, um, the uh, failures in these um, 
grid blackouts and so on uh, have causes uh, about 35 to 55 billion dollars a year to our economy. So that's no, yeah, that's, that's not a, so. Uh, now, if, yeah, huge amount. If uh, there could be an easy solution to this problem, uh, certainly they'd have would have done it. Yeah, right would have been there, Dara. Yeah. Well, whenever we talk about energy, the first two things people always come out with as the next solution tend to be wind or solar. Uh, are the are the two? Yeah. Could that could that be the fix you're talking about? Uh, not really, because uh, wind and solar use the grid uh, to transmit over the same lines, and uh, even when there's a power failure, these uh, are automatically shut down. These are intermittent energy supplies, so they really depend on the grid, and uh, so you, they can't even really help uh, with power failures. So they can never replace. Uh, the grid for you know as a by themselves. So that uh, here we're in California, obviously, and uh, up north we have the big wind farms, and on the way to Vegas you can see the solar farm. Mm -hmm. So they're creating our electricity, but you're saying the delivery system ends up being the same problem. Right. If it, we we could still have the same problem. It doesn't yeah. matter it uh, shows if we fix that. Long distance transmission is the problem. Is still the problem. So what uh, what is the solution? I'm, I'm told that you have a, a revolutionary idea. Well, the only. Um, thing that can uh, take the place of the grid would have to get rid of long distance transmission. So it would have to do these things on the right. side here? And have to use a, a reliable source of uh, locally produced energy and fuel. And uh, it work uh, night and day in any weather, uh, which solar and wind doesn't. Scalable for industrial and, and home use. You know, all, all uses, very small footprint to um, and be invisible, essentially, not like the grid, which is not invisible. And uh, it has to use uh, renewable carbon neutral uh, fuels uh, uh, from waste, actually. And it has to be quiet and uh, uh, operate, you know, be able to operate in homes and in buildings. And then also it, um, it has to provide energy on demand uh, that needs little or no backup I guess that's or, a, or storage. Yeah, so that's a, obviously that's a lot to say that the, the thing we need to replace would have to do all these things. And I assume you're gonna tell me that uh, <laughs> this is part of the solution, that we have something that could do this? Yes, uh, the only thing that can cover everything on this list uh, is a modern piston steam engine. There's one there. It's, it's now a, I picture, a, you know, the old modern steam engines seem seem big, like a, you know that we're uh, running steamboats and stuff like that. High steam pressure. This is obviously well, not it's that. low low pressure steam, but also it can do, it can incorporate many functions at the same time as producing electricity. So the um, efficiency and um, uh, the Simplicity is really uh, excess, uh, really the high for for uh, uh, any system, so and it can uh, operate uh, in any on any scale. So this could be uh, this would be the kind. Maybe I would assume this size would be the kind you'd have in a house. Yes, this uh, is a, this can run a house. This uh -huh. this just this engine here would run a house. And yes. It would, so obviously, mm -hmm. it would fit in the same place that your your uh, water heater is. Yeah, it fits yeah. in with a. A uh, heater tank. You don't have the same kind of heater, uh, water heater, because this this provides your hot water. This would re replace that as well with the right. heat excess coming off right. this. So you're saying so no, we wouldn't have power lines coming in anymore. We wouldn't have to worry about our power is coming from someone or if, if the uh, electrical grid goes down. That's right. It's an independent no, of the electrical grid. No blackouts. It's just you, right. If you go down, your house goes down. Now your neighbor would be fine. Everyone around. right. That okay. You mentioned renewable fuels is what it runs on. What, what exactly are, are they? How do you describe? Well, this? renewable fuels um, are any waste. Biomass is uh, any living thing, and it and they're the source of of the soil and green. Uh, uh, That's yeah, right. <laughs> the source of the fuel could be any of these uh, things that I've mentioned here, and and basically things that fit in landfills. In fact, this mitigates uh, the uh, need for landfill. So this it almost reminds me of, uh, I think it was the end of the first Back to the Future, where they're, they're yeah. putting, yeah, banana peels in and, yeah, and, and, and that everything. Kind of 
So it could uh -huh. use that to, to power. That's right. That, that kind of stuff. Any kind of uh, uh, biomass will, will work, and that can be converted into biogas, which can be um, delivered uh, by the existing gas lines. The gas lines that are already out right. there that we, you know, some people use for their stoves. And, yes, and that kind same, of the hot same water. lines. Mm -hmm. uh, are these engines, is this is just, just a, pr a prototype? Is this just an idea, or are these actual? These are um, made today, but they, um, my company is um, making these engines, but I, we also offer a patented um, technology and offer licenses for that technology for developing uh, complete systems, uh, energy systems. So they're available in, uh, in online. And as anymore. you mentioned, there, so this would be the one for a house, but if we were a building, would have a, a much bigger oh, one. Oh, yes, they have large, large ones. And, and these and, are safe, like I said, I, mean, I just remember my idea of a steam engine as, you know, uh, you know a, a, an engine on a boat or something like that. It's very hot and crazy. This would, that's not how it would be in your house. Are these, hmm. these have made no. big oh. advancements, I assume? All of the heat is used, so it's taken away and used for it. So you don't have it. It's just you would have your own heating system in the house, and the heating system is what runs the it's engine what's running and, that. So and your, makes your hot water and space heat and everything together. Awesome. I, I've told that even uh, an engine like this can run, can re keep recharging an electrical car. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. This is a car that's being developed now in Singapore that's a steam electric car. So and one of these is, is, in, is inside there and being found? Right, and it actually uh, runs on uh, rice husks. Oh, wow. So uh, this is the new DeLorean, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, yeah. That's right. That's amazing. It's, yeah. Uh, you mentioned all the things it would have to do for people to even consider this as the alternative in the future. Uh, but I, I'm told there's some other benefits that that this will provide besides the things we need. Yes, and in, in addition to uh, producing electricity, of course, like I said before, it, it produces all your space heat, hot water, and your air conditioning, as well as it can actually make its own fuel. And uh, it, uh, it can also be used for direct mechanical energy, for water pumping, um, uh, air compression, refrigeration, uh, anything that you use mechanical energy for. Uh, and it has water distilling capability, so you can distill water with it at the same time you're making electricity. So you would be making water in your house? Like yes, to yes you water. can re yeah. recycle your water. And you, it can uh, recycle wastewater, even um, sewage water, and, uh, into, and convert it into, but into um, reusable water. But it also can run off of waste heat in uh, industrial processes and um, geothermal. It can be used in geothermal and it's, um, it's capable of present or giving energy on demand, of course, for, uh, and it's suitable for like greenhouses because it can run complete greenhouses. Everything in a greenhouse cannot run off of a <laughs> single engine. So you mentioned this is obviously a much more local. People would have this in their house. It takes away the grid. Uh, right. It stops the blackouts, mass blackouts. Uh, it would work, obviously, you may, we talked about solar and wind before. It worked in conjunction, but you'd have it locally rather than a gigantic farm right. that you're receiving it, that power it can from. Use, it can work in, in conjunction with a home um, solar system. And, uh, and it can actually run off of solar itself because you, you can actually run... Uh, make steam with solar through the solar. Mm -hmm. Now, and uh, I've told you, I've told you, I have a schematic that shows us kind of exactly how this happens, how the steam engine provides all these things. Ninety percent of electricity today is made with steam, right? Uh, but it's you, but it's made with fossil fuels and nuclear fuel. I don't know if you know, Robert. I didn't tell you before. I was I served on board a nuclear submarine, so our whole idea was. We, right, you, that's you, run you, with steam you, too. You have the reactor just so you can make steam. That's what it yeah. ends up being. So, that's right. but this is you're saying we could get rid of the get rid of the reactor, the dangerous stuff, yes. the fossil fuels, and so this is how. So right, yeah. and this can run on biofuels instead. But the uh, the way the steam is uh, recycled in a in a uh, utility system is that uh, because they they have to um, take the heat out of the steam in order to. Uh, convert it back into water in order to recycle it. 
the big banks. cooling towers. So yeah, yeah. so they they cool the steam by putting them through uh, cooling towers. Here's a example of cooling towers at, yeah, you in a it. utility, and this is just total waste, uh, waste of energy. All that waste, all that energy is just going into the atmosphere. Right. Uh, but with this uh, system, uh, with the uh, steam engine um, power system, it produces instead of the waste. They just put, uh, you put it into your water tank and your space heat and your air condition. It can make air conditioning and distill water at the same time. So when you're making the electricity, you're using all that waste heat for all of these processes. You mentioned the, the fuels, and obviously we were talking about the biomass and our own refuse kind of stuff, like leftover banana peels and that kind of stuff to put in. But are the other fuels being, uh, being used today? There's a lot of companies that are making pellets and uh, biomass pellets and pellet gas. They're also making uh, biogas, and they're making biogas systems today. So and if you didn't have those things, then there would be a provider of these pellets that would, would yes. power these things. Yes, and pellets are really good for rural areas where uh, you just put it into a, a hopper and you just fill the hopper up once right. a week. And, would, uh, you, would, you need, um, would you need a battery for this as well? Uh, no, that's the great thing about this. Uh, you don't need enter, uh, large uh, electrical storage. You only need a few hours of storage. And uh, so you really don't need those big um, uh, storage batteries like uh, Elon Musk wants. <laughs> he looks sad. So yeah. Sorry, Elon. <laughs> You've let him uh, down that yeah, yeah. you're not going to use his batteries. Well, it's a pretty incredible idea. And like I said, revolutionary that you want to tear everything down and start it. This is probably where we start uh, today. What's your, what's your vision for the, for the future? Well, the first thing I'd like to burn all of the <laughs> utility poles Those that are, are in the, use yeah, today. That uh, that's a good start. That for, we uh, could use that for fuel? That would last. Uh, that, right. <laughs> it would last a while. Uh, there are many uh, different uh, fuels that uh, you can use. These are this is an These example are pellets. of pellets, uh, and the in general, um, uh, that is that industry is another industry that's going to be growing up out of this new system, and right. uh, it can be made all locally from uh, local um, biomass and waste that's uh, that needs to be uh, gotten rid of anyway. Right. So. So you see waste as our future, huh? Yes. Well, it's revolutionary, Robert. Uh, Robert Green and his uh, modern piston steam engine. Thank you.